All right, everyone. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of 2030 Podcast, Facebook Live, and YouTube Stream. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan, and today I have my friend Patrick Brennan with me. How are you doing, Patrick? Good. I'm a little hungry, but that's about it. <laughs> we are going to get some food after we finish doing this. We've been having some great conversations about observing people. And we wanted to share these conversations about observing people with you guys at home. Now, Patrick, what do you think when you look out into the world today? Start us off. Uh, can you be a little more specific? All right, we'll be like more with specific. People or with like, people, okay, yeah. yeah. When yeah. we analyze the crap out of society, what are we seeing? Um, I want to start by saying like, I have zero... Uh, Alan has vetted me into his science nerd community, so I don't have any degrees. I'm not a PhD. Um, this is just my opinions and what I know based on my experience. Um, he's being humble. He's a smart kid. That's why he's here. He's 20 years old. He moved from Montana to the Bay Area to pursue some goals, and I, just like I did moving from South Dakota. What the hell do we see when we observe people? Um, people want fast results, um, very basic material. Um, it's almost like robotic and it's kind of like, it's kind of depressing to watch because you, you feel disconnected with like your own species almost in a weird way to put it. Um, what is robotic? Cause wh when I catch myself scrolling through my Instagram, like, like double tap, like, yeah, that's what it, I mean, you, you, you'll text somebody and you'll say LMAO or LOL and you won't even laugh. Like just yep. ex excess air will come from your nose. You'll go. <laughs> And it's like, LOL, that's so funny. Like, that's, but no, it wasn't. Like, there's, there was zero reaction whatsoever. What else You're has just going through the motions. become robotic? Besides the social media consumption, what else do we see that's robotic? Um, I think just like emotions. Um, we don't look at dating, for example. Like, pe people just don't go out on dates anymore. People have a hard time interacting with one another. Um, You'll notice too that people will have a difficult time like looking you in the eye and speaking. Um, yeah, I think that's a big one, and I think that's just a motive of like it, it's so easy to and so like people always say, oh, it's easy to get behind the screen and say whatever you want, cyberbullying this that, but it's kind of reshaping us as humans and how we interact with one another. Um, it's kind of dark and twisted. But. So let's elaborate a little bit more on that. It's hard for people to now look at one another in the eyes. It's become hard. So what exactly, why is that a problem? 50 years ago, 100 years ago, was it different? Were people better at interacting with one another than we are today? Are we too distracted now? Uh, yeah, to a point. And a lot of it's just like um, how quickly you, communi you can communicate. I mean, I can text my grandma back in Montana right now. And everything will be fine, but I don't have to put in any thought into, say, like a letter or um, actively getting her address, getting to know that it's her birthday, whatever. I get a Facebook notification saying that it's her birthday. I write a little cute thing on her wall or whatever. Um, I feel like a good person. She likes it, and that's our interaction. And that, but that's a good <laughs> that's a good aspect it of is, technology because you weren't in there in person to say it, right? Right, but still, it just it really it makes it separates that um, that emotion from it. Just, I mean, how weird is it that you only know it's somebody's birthday because Facebook told you, and then you put it hundred percent. I would not know about people's birthdays. I put your birthday in the calendar today, yeah. um, and it's tough, man. It's tough to remember people's birthdays now. Um, mm -hmm. But back, yeah, back then it was all based on memory or based on writing it into your calendar. So more stuff that we observe about humanity. Okay, so it's now when we look at each other in the eyes and we talk to one another, it's more difficult to go deep with people. It's more difficult to ask people, what are you passionate about? Where is your family from? Where, what languages do you speak? What do you care about? Tell me more about yourself. Why is it difficult to talk to people about things that are deeper? Why do we stay so surface level? Because people, ultimately, we don't care. It's just, um, we act in our own self-interest. You're just not gaining anything from it, first of all. Um, and on top of that... What if I was to say you do gain something from it? Well, what if I was to say that the more that you care about somebody and show them that you care about them, the further that goes for you and your relationship with that person? 
So if you're trying to help them and they're trying to help you, it maximizes that relationship. Okay. I don't want to say we've been... It's not genetic modification, but it's also it's like a social modification where we've become um, just accustomed to not interacting with one another. And it's, it's something that isn't um, keen on our society. We're getting like little hearts across our screens right now. It's kind of... Like, I don't know what that means. Are we doing good? It apparently means you okay. get some hearts. All right, cool. Thank you. I keep sending them. I don't know what the fuck that means. I don't know if I'm not sorry. You, no, you can swear as much as you want okay. on here. I don't know. what's the internet. Free speech, man. I'm like, it's yeah. under attack. C- censored know. speech. Censored, yeah. censored, censored speech. Be politically correct. No swearing on this ever. Ever. All right. Um, okay, so you like the study of sociology and psychology, uh, people dynamics. Look at those little things. What are those? <laughs> They're little hearts flying across the screen. Uh, so See, this is what I'm talking about. We're, yeah. we're becoming... We're distracted. We're deta- well, not just distracted, but we're just detached. Like, instead of going out of your way and ordering, you know, your grandma flowers or putting an extra effort for anything, mm-hmm. it's just kind of like, we're just, we're so humans that we're just trying to be so efficient in everything that it's like oh well i'll just i'll just click a like on their photo but i'm not going to text them back you know it's just like little things like we're we're just getting more and more detached so we've lost a lot of our in-person touch our in-person communication and love for one another um our ability to empathize with one another yeah Um, well here's the thing mm -hmm. too like one fascinating thing like is with um back to the dating is like is um especially women a lot of men will approach them online and not in person. Like you'll, you'll, they'll know them. They'll be in the same class with them. For example, um, you guys will eat a, a common restaurant. They'll find your Instagram or Facebook somehow, friend you, and then message you. And then it's really odd how it's not. They never will have. Uh, I don't want to say the courage or the balls, but it's just that that extra oomph into getting to know a girl. Um, having like an attractive younger sister, like I watched that firsthand. Mm-hmm. like literally like dozens of messages or whatever and it's like hey you're so, like professing their love like or their passion like less of it there's less of it no there's i'm confused there's less question. of it in person there's less oh, yeah. Yeah, in yeah, yeah, person yeah, yeah, yeah. love and passion yeah. and expressing oh, yeah. of it it's like I've, I've always wanted to be with you you're so beautiful you're gorgeous i'm not sure what like um but that's all online and then in person they mm-hmm. would like it would relationship be like, dynamics moved online wow the weather's nice today and it's oh, like there's just swipe, such a separation swipe swipe oh okay cool swipe no no yes no yeah no. yeah yeah some crazy that's some crazy life um now i see a comment here i do want to touch on people's comments uh when they are exceptional so uh, my friend uh, mahmoud zaini um he says we don't observe people in the real physical world using our own biological eyes without any media mediatory agent so today's observation happens through the mediation of many devices so other people and companies. So here's this question. Why is observation outside the realm of technological help greater than the one that happens through me- medi- mediation? Um, meditation. Me- mediation. Yes. Is it true so- sociability only valid without the help of technology? Um, that's a really interesting point. So ba- in, in, just got a laughing face across the screen. <laughs> so that's good. So in essence, um, this means that technology is shaping the way that we view the world. Companies are shaping the way we view the world. We do less critical thinking today about the things that are most meaningful and analyze those things than we did before. Because now companies are shaping the way that we see them in ways that have the incentive of that company. It's not necessarily a, 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 um, a moderated way. It's not necessarily in the middle as a moderator. So I like that point. That's a great point. Um, and I wonder how many, because like we're talking about the Instagram likes and the Snapchat swipes and we're talking about the way that people no longer look at one another in the eyes and express how much they care about one another and want to get to know each other that well maybe that has something to do with our innate relationship with this technology now this insatiable connection to technology um that's a great point do you have thoughts on that um i agree with it i think that um 
what these linkage institutions do for us is it, it makes us more aware of trying to be normal. Um, I know personally we've talked around a campfire about like the institution of marriage, for example, and just how everybody tries to be so normal and you try to force something onto you that you think is normal, even if it's something that you wouldn't even agree with if you were a free thinker. I mean, who's to say that you're supposed to marry somebody for how many years because a piece of paper says so or religion says so and then you're supposed Correct. to produce kids with them and only them and then you're supposed to live with them forever you're supposed to start a mortgage together like it's just it's a very odd process if, yes. you, if you make it weird um that's the um i'm a sociology or yeah sociology class right now and it's called the soci sociological imagination and it's the process of making things that are normal yeah. seem weird and it's true like if you look at it like what is what is family like who's to say that these bunch of people that are related by blood are supposed to be taking care of each other like who's to say that it's not supposed to be like your first grade class like why aren't we all still together you know who's who's to say mm -hmm. that your birth givers um are the ones you're supposed yeah. to show those tight connections with yeah the question of constantly questioning there's this word oppositism so it's when you first are indoctrinated into a philosophy of any sort, the first thing that you think of is could the exact opposite be true? And when you do that, yeah, it gives you a more analytical perspective of that thing. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, because it could have gone easily gone the the other way. If, you're, if, you're, our, like if, you our, if our world leaders, if our religious leaders, world leaders said. Okay, the, the the perfect family is with ten husbands and one wife, and no and like no kids. And I mean, people would do it. Everybody just wants to be normal. If like, that had been happening for tens of thousands of years beforehand, it would be normal today. Yeah. Oh yeah. So so oppositism is really important when somebody tells you, "Hey, you're supposed to get married. You're supposed to have kids." What think? Wait, what if I didn't get married? What would my life look like? What if I didn't have kids? Maybe another one is somebody tells you, "Hey, like you're poor. You should eat McDonald's." Well, what about the exact opposite? Like, no, I'm poor, but maybe there's a way for me to survive and buy cheap food that I can make at home. I can buy rice and make rice at home that's cheaper than McDonald's and healthier for me. So there's all of these sorts of questions that arise in when we observe society. So we had a good conversation about the about the differences between these sort of soft sciences, which are the sciences of like observing people, sociology and psychology, the brain, the brain is definitely not soft. The brain is very neuroscience, it's very hard science, but so is, you know, biology and physics and chemistry, those are harder sciences. Now, you, we, don't, we don't even relate to them on a versus basis anymore. We relate to them like it's all intertwined. Yeah. And that's what really gives us this interdisciplinary view of this world that we live in. We don't just live on the rock that orbits the star and that's because of space, time and physics. But we also see all seven and a half billion people on that floating rock and exactly what they're doing as closely as we can observe and analyze. And then what insights that gives into us to build a better future. Yeah. Yeah? All right, cool, cool. So any any other thoughts on that topic before we move on? Um, I don't think so. That was well said. Thanks, brother. He says some good shit too. I really like Patrick. I hope you guys do too. Again, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we have Facebook Live. We have Twitter Live. We got YouTube going. Uh, 2030 Podcast is rolling as well. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Please share if this is interesting Wait, or to, making you a... You need to address the comment though okay. that we have. Uh, did I just quote South Park? That's probably me, um, like, maybe. unconsciously. Maybe, maybe one of us did. I'm not sure. Not sure. Wait, okay. So let's go on to the next point. Next okay. point. So the next point is about consumption versus creation. We've talked about this before. We, we've had podcasts on it. We've had conversations on it. What the hell is the difference between consumption and creation? Um, why is it important? You need to have a good balance between the two. If you're if you're just consuming all the time, then you're just a slave. I mean, what, absolutely. You, what is what is your you, you have literally zero purpose. You're not creating anything. Exactly. You're not making anything new. You're you're just a you're just a part in the system. Um, 
you're just buying into the um, into the thing that we've made up. The treadmill, the treadmill, the hedonic treadmill. We will just keep going and keep buying and keep consuming and keep materializing and keep posting and keep doing that over and over daily, pooping, peeing, sleeping, the over or drinking, smoking, consume, consume, consume. Now, when was the last time that we posted a, a line of poetry? When was the last time that we wrote a short article? When was the last time that we painted something? When was the last time that we grew a little bit of vegetables in our garden? When? When was the last time that we did that? I have some vegetables growing right now. At least there's that. Um, I try and post things on the internet. I try and make these videos. We're making one right now. This is this is not consuming. This is creating. And we challenge all of you guys to create something like this into the world. A video or something that's written or your vegetables in the garden, whatever it is. Create something into the world. Otherwise, we're just caught in the treadmill of consumption. I think that's why... People start families, though. One reason is why you have families, why you have dogs, why you have things, because you get to, you're, you're giving them. Mm, you, you, that's you good. Want, you want to find a peace and you want to create something and you want to, you want to give purpose to the world, I guess. You kind of want to, um, you want to in, send your influence and see how it would turn out. I think it's different with biological kids because we also have a way that we want to spread our genes and see what, what would our kids be like. But at the same time, we want to create something. We want to watch something start from a beginning yeah. and grow to an end, whether it be a plant, tomato, pot, <laughs> a dog, um, yeah. or a child, or even just a project, whether you're a small business person or an entrepreneur, you just want to see something grow and nurture and succeed. And that's it's literally the same thing as being a parent. So, I mean, if you're a parent, whether it be of a business, um, a puppy dog, or a family, it's, um, you're trying to, you're trying to make something greater than yourself. You're investing in something that's not yourself. I wasn't expecting you to go into the family side of things, but I like that. I like it. It's unique. I wasn't thinking about that. You're right. We create by having kids. Yeah. That is a way we create. We create by having dogs, etc. So now we raise them, we provide happiness to them. So I just want to challenge that point a little bit though. When you create something like a child into the world, and if we don't challenge that child to become a creator of sorts, then is not that child continuing to just consume? They're consuming diapers, they're consuming food, they're consuming energy and resources of the planet, and then they end up becoming an adult and their parents have never taught them how to make anything into the world? I think there's a few rare instances where there's going to be, um, a, cause it's a combination of genetics too. Um, some people just, I, some people just know, um, you, you're not really taught, um, to free think or do anything valid, but, um, we're not taught to free think. That's a big problem. Well, I think that if you're, if you were born in like a, a, a test simulation where you're not given any opportunity to free think at all. I think there would be a few rare instances where somebody does question their meaning with regardless of correct a lack of, correct I mean but the majority of the population I mean you just, you kind of look not around you and born everything's to just free think yeah not born to free think we don't live in a world that catalyzes free thinking that is a big problem we get sorted in half in the United States just polarized right off the bat you're Republican or you're Democrat. Right off the bat, you say something I don't agree with, cognitive dissonance, nope, not listening, doesn't matter, right over my head, I believe in my thing, that's it. That's not cool. That's not cool, that's not open-mindedness, it's not a growth mindset, that's not being in the middle. Well, and I found that the people that realize that there's greater meaning in life are people that travel, um, because the, the, they're willing to actively place themselves in a, literally a foreign world, you have to learn a new culture, a new language, new way of doing things. I mean, if somebody from Denmark, for example, came to the United States, you'd be like, what the fuck? Like, you have, you know, you just elected some dictator. Half the people hate each other in the country. The other half hates the other half. There's just so much conflict. And 
but at the same time, like we we think that we're the best. We believe we're the best country in the world, Absolutely. which I'm not saying we are or we're not. I'm not taking a position on that. It's just a statistic that no matter what country you're in, you probably think you're better than the guy next door. Probably. And we also have the, like you mentioned at the beginning, we need to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah, we just got an angry face. and That's I'm so important. Com- I'm a little uncomfortable right Stop now. Stop it. But how so can- how, <laughs> how important is that? We all know that we got to take the risks in life. We have to take the risk. Take the risk and start your own business. Take yeah. the risk and travel to a different country. Take the risk and walk across the bar and talk to that guy or girl. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How hard is that? Go take those risks. Learn how to take those risks. They will pay off. You will have lessons learned from every single one of those experiences. Well, and that's what that's what we were talking about earlier. When you're becoming a slave to the system, it's it's disconnecting your ability to do that. Yes. It, it's it's just it's just a shit distraction. There's a a wonderful motivational video that I'll give you later, but it's like some smart guy who's smarter than me said um that everything we do is just shit like just put down your just put down your phone and just hit a book like when's the last time you put down when's, your phone and hit when, a book when's the last time you turn off your ding 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 I love that one no but like so when when's the last time you turn off your phone for 24 hours and just enjoyed being by yourself exactly I love that one it's it's just yes and there's a lot of science behind that too, but in yeah, to- I mean, turn but- the device off for 24 hours. You have a weekend. I know you guys have a weekend. Turn the phone off for 24 hours. Text the mom, text the dad, text the girlfriend and boyfriend. Let them know ahead of time. Yeah, that's Phone's important. going off for 24 hours. I'm going to be reading, walking in the park. I'm just going to be thinking to myself oh, about certain things. Be- it's a beautiful experience. Beautiful like, experience. Yeah. You're not tethered to that device anymore. It's, it's even better if you actively place yourself in a position or a location where there's uh, no signal. Um, just go, going up to the mountains and just going camping with friends. Yep. It's not like you have to isolate yourself from the world. You can invite people with you. But it, guess it, what? There's that... no light pollution up there either. So you get a nice fat Milky Way to look at and observe at night. Yep. Yep. So um, you had this quote earlier. It was, I like people of action. That's a great quote. I said that at the beginning of the night when I came over. I yes. forget what we're talking about. We're talking about execution. Yeah. We're talking about execution. A lot of people talk. A lot of people talk ideas. It's oh, great. Oh, I love that comment that we just got. First Facebook Live that I haven't seen that wasn't shit. Keep going. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. No, we were t- right before we started yeah, this, I that told him. shit. Yeah. I told him right before we started, I said that all the Facebook Live videos that I've ever watched were like garbage. Like they, they talk about their life. Hey. Like, hey, I'm sitting in bed eating Cheetos. What's everybody up to? Like, who wants to watch that? Like, that's... You're not getting anything done. You're not talking about anything. It's just you literally not doing anything. I'm watching... Yeah. I'm consuming you consuming. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> consuming like, you like, consuming. Like, what's lower so than meta. that? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. All right, all right. So this is good. Um, uh, wait, yeah, we have... I l- literally losing, just losing lost your... my phone on Friday. I don't have one. It's fucking great. Or no, just it, no, 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 no. It, it's, a, it's a beautiful experience. Like, yeah. at first it sucks because you lose your connection. But people... F- like, the people who care about you and the people that really want to get a hold of you will find a way. Like, and that's kind of you find who's genuine. It's kind of like... I know in my personal family, like, it kind of stood out, like, who really... Who honestly cares? And so you can measure by who would reach out to you when your phone got disconnected. Oh yeah. I mean, would they just, I mean, just get automatically just jump to conclusions, get pissed at you or would they keep trying? Like keep reaching would out. Would you realize that you lost, that people lose their phone? Let's see breaks. This. In the job setting, I see it as pushing the envelope and thinking outside the norm. We've always done it like this, but could it better, more efficient? Sometimes people get caught in the structure of the company where they are just middle men slash women post office effect where they don't think for themselves and take some responsibility risk to stick their neck out there don't be afraid to be wrong to actually make a decision or try new things nice comment neil so the idea of in the workplace we get trapped in the nine to five and then we don't actually go and branch ourselves out to the music club and the book club and hiking and even then take a risk in the workplace walk up to your boss and be like hey i just kicked ass for you the last six months 
Can I please, <laughs> can, can I have a raise? Can I have a raise? Like, yeah, no, we're just like stating the facts. Like state people, the facts. Pe- get like, a raise. Or just find him on Instagram, send him a message, say that he's cute, and then hope for a raise. And then like, hope for yeah, a raise. that's like if if the world yeah. ran like teenagers right now, that's what would happen. That's what would happen. <laughs> See, that's it's true. It is um I we got an I can't stop watching. Let's go. Let's keep it up. So this is good flow. Good comments, team. Keep pushing it out. We'll keep commenting as you go. Um, so this idea well, of I I, I, I I like people of action. Yeah. Well, I just well, I want to touch on Neil's comment one yes. more time too. Is um, I know I love the song um by the Verve Bittersweet Symphony. Um, and even the music video is very poetic. It's just him walking down a street and just kind of. I mean, he's just rocking right down the sidewalk, and he's not moving for people. He's just very focused, and I mean, people get pissed. Some people blow him off; they don't care. But it really should. And like, uh, the the most my favorite quote from that song is, um, "Trying to make ends meet, you're a slave to money, then you die." Yeah, that's try to make ends meet. You're a slave to money, then you die. Yeah, that sounds horrible. That's that consumption. Sounds absolutely that's absolutely horrible. Consumption. Please take me out of that matrix as soon as possible. I do not want to make ends meet and then make money and then just die. That is not what I want to do. Um, And I'm very happy we're sharing this with other people. Like, don't just do that in your life. Do more than that. Go travel. Go write. Go explore. Okay, uh, moving on. So this idea of I like people of action. It's a very execution Mm -hmm. airy quote. It's the people that talk about ideas, you're doing something well. We're not saying people that talk about ideas aren't doing something well, but we're saying the step above people talking about ideas is when you take action to make your ideas into a reality and impact people positively with those dreams and goals and and achievements. Yeah. Um, Touching on, I mean, just speaking on that, like people of action are found very in discreet ways in society or just in the world that you wouldn't even think about. Um, Personally, I really connect well with people that are, of different backgrounds, whether it be they're from a different country and they're living in San Francisco or you're, you know, even like, even at a younger age, like middle school, high school, like I really got along well with like people that were like, uh, gay or in the transgender community because they're actively putting themselves in action. Like yeah. they're not just sitting That's around true. talking about it. Like you have to actively place yourself in that category. Like yeah. you could easily live the lie and just yeah. conform, but like, to do that, it just kind of it shows that you have the guts to actually take action yeah. and do what you believe in, and I think that's Absolutely. really admirable. And you have to um, constantly talk to people about something that makes you a little uncomfortable, so it makes you comfortable with that over time. Yeah. It makes other people more comfortable and open to that over time. Yeah. Um. So, okay, execution crucial. Build out those things. You would be surprised at how often people would think that you're a leader as well. Becoming a leader is a really good trait. It's great to learn how to lead and motivate people to come together to build things. And then furthermore, then learn from other people as a leader as well. Empathize and respect people that are older than you and what they can teach you. Um, All right. So let's keep moving on. Let's keep moving on. So um, we kind of touched on this before, but this whole idea of people not looking at each other's eyes enough and knowing how to ask these deep questions. I love Asking people deep questions, looking at them in the eyes, caring about them, um, and asking them these empowering questions, having people talk about their lives a little bit. You know that about me now. I see that in you too. You ask a lot of the good deep questions. How can we tell other people about the beauties in that and inspire other people to care about that? I think you just have to experience it. Experience yeah. it. And that means go and ask you the can't, people you those can't questions. Talk, you can't talk about experiences. You can't talk about it. I mean, it's just... Go do it. That's the thing. You go do it. You go and you do the thing that scares you. And that thing that scares you is walking up to a random person and being like, yo, what are you passionate about? Tell me about your family. Where are you from? Right. What do you care about? Well, what, what impact do you want to make in the world? There's there's, there's, there's definitely a line and we, we talked Absolutely. about We've that We've talked too. about this before, not getting too intense. But yeah. go, and, go and do that. Go and practice that. One question at a time, of course, but go and practice that and see what, where it ends up going. Oh, yeah. Well, too often, we'll, you'll be sitting in a coffee shop and see somebody with really cool tattoos and you'll want to know where they got their tattoos from or you'll see somebody... Reading a great book or yeah. drawing something beautiful. Yeah. And Go you, approach them. You like their haircut and just tell them, like, what's, like, what's the big deal? You nice know? nice eyes. Yeah. Um, so, and the other thing, and, and we've touched on this a little bit, but the idea of going and executing is 
actually works together with the idea of talking deeply with people and empathizing with them and um, asking them empowering questions. And what else ties in um, with that is the, um, what was the thought I wanted to share? It was as we become this, uh, this, this best of ourselves by opening ourselves up to these things that make us uncomfortable, um, it also brings us self-actualization. It, it brings us purpose and meaning in life when we go and challenge ourselves and then we find the things that we like a lot by doing that. And that, and we meet people that we wouldn't have met before. Wayne Gretzky, you miss 100% of shots in life you don't take. It's a really important statement. You got to go and take that risk, go and take that shot and see what it produces. It might produce a great relationship, might produce nothing, but that's kind of how we, uh, we figure it out over time. Let's move into this last topic. So uh, quick comment, it becomes very hard for people to be flaky when you don't have a phone and I found that people are a lot more reliable. That's a good point. Don't work for a company that you would surround yourself with lazy people who are comfortable and don't take risks. Surround yourself with people that will help you grow every day. Good good comment there, Ryan. Good job. I totally agree with that. Very important. We touched on that. Um, challenge yourself. Last, last thought. So last thought in observing people, we see a lot of observations in today's world about the subjectivity of what is God. A lot of people talk about it and a lot of people have an, an objective answer. God exists. God doesn't exist. Well, what is even your definition of God? Is it a deity? Is it some, is it all of the laws of the universe that we observe? You didn't ask me that question for it. I, that was like what? a divine <laughs> intervention that just happened it's right now. so polarized. But no, yeah, it is. Um, and what's really interesting, actually, just um, I'm writing a, an essay kind of on this, touching on religion and like what it does for people. Okay. But um, tell more. We look. We look for um, religion as an institution of um, safety, stability, um, and hope after death. I mean, in times of despair, where, yes. the, where the world's burning and crashing down on you, it, it's it's nice to believe that there's somebody something that's greater than yourself and that everything's going to be okay it's very difficult for us to assume that something happened to not assume that something happens when you die because then what's the point and um people really look to that and they they need it a lot of people need it for their sanity um i know for a while i really questioned everything but life is just goes so much better if you just say you know what something is greater than myself i don't know what it is i'm not going to put a label on it but something's greater than myself and I accept that. And you, you just live a happier life that way. And that's just my personal experience. Other people say that uh, they can live in a negative uh, atmosphere and they can just say there's nothing greater than myself. There's no purpose. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. Some people say that you need to devote your life and be a martyr. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say that's fine. But Oof. it's, yeah, it's a little... Uh, no bueno. Well... It, it, it's that safety. And I mean, we really see the, the revival of religion that I wrote about that's this in my essay That's the part of religion well, that's not okay. Is killing each other. No. No. Don't do it. Don't do it. If you want to start writing in public, you sh Look at all these questions. Here, keep going on this topic. Okay, sorry. Um, we'll get to the questions in a sec. Um, but no, really. Should religious... I start writing in public? That's a good question. Okay, fine, fine. Let's touch on that. Well, That's a good question. Okay. That's a good question. No, it is. I just need to write down my thought. Before. Oh, there was I just need... it. Uh, okay. No, talk about okay. writing. Well, st stay here for a second. Just lo log it in your mind. Okay. Log it in okay, your okay, mind. Okay, okay. So, Cooper asks, should I start writing in public? Depends on the situation. If you feel comfortable with it, do it. Um, I'm wait, not going to tell you wait, how to make your decisions. No, no, but even if you don't feel comfortable doing it, try it. Oh shit! You're right? right. That's yeah. What I we gotta do. We gotta take that about. risk. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So the whole idea of if you feel uncomfortable doing it, still go and try and see how it makes you feel. Maybe even write somewhere, or draw somewhere, or do something, create something somewhere where it's more open for other people to walk by you and say something. Who knows? Somebody might walk by you and be like, "Hey, I'm writing something similar," or "Hey, this might be a good idea to add." And you'll be like, "Damn, that's." 
pretty cool. And that way you can be open to more criticism, make some new friends, that kind of stuff. If you're not growing, you're dying. True. How can you claim to think outside the iteration of your life? That's a pretty. That's for me, or that's for you. That's a pretty good quote, um, or it's pretty good question. So, here's here's my thought about that. When one, you'll never actually see behind the eyes of another person ever in your whole life. Hopefully, at some point, technology gets to some great point like that where we can actually do it. Maybe, but for now, the better you are at analyzing somebody's actions, the better you are at analyzing their behaviors, their every nuance of life, the more you paint a better idea of who they are. And then you can make small claims about what you perceive about that person. And so that's why when, even though when you're walking down the street and it looks like um, you're, you're on the bus and you see somebody using Instagram and they look like they're just a zombie swiping, what if they're looking up a medical company that in Instagram that they're trying to start using for their prosthetic on their leg? Mm -hmm. See, we never know, right? Things like that. Even when, whenever I see people with headphones walking down the street, I always assume they're cranking some zombie rap stuff some soldier boy <laughs> yeah just like really weird monotonous like pop culture like what everybody listens to but i've always want my mom now watch me you <laughs> crank yeah. that soul now why are you i uh i remember in 2008 when michael phelps was behind the blocks for one of his big races he had his headphones in and my mom was like i wonder what he listens to like do you think he listens to like audiobooks or like do you think he listens to like prayers and i was like <laughs> what <laughs> like it's, it's really interpretive, like, what you could be listening to. It's just, like, weird how people... He, he probably listens to left arm. Oh, it was... Right arm. It was, left arm. He, he wrote Fox. a book about it, and it was Eminem. So... Oh, it was it Eminem. Was, oh, yeah, it, it was, was Eminem, rad. but... Eminem's um, decent, at least. All right. So we have another... We need to be surrounded by people who radiate self-love and abundance. So we live... So we don't program future generations with gnarly beliefs like money is bad and I'm not good enough and I can't live the way I want to live. Most people are living in an illusion based on someone else's beliefs. Don't be most people. What I want you to do is clear your head and say to yourself, the world is filled with limitless possibilities. I believe that anything is possible. That's good, Darby. I like that. I like that. The world is it's filled in with limitless possibilities. It's in quotations. I want to know who said that. I believe that can, anything is possible. You can put whoever said that in the comments as well. That All right. Let us know who said that. Um, that's good. Yes. Don't allow yourself to be limited. Trust in yourself and your ability to bridge outside of what makes you feel uncomfortable and inspire younger generations to do the same over time. Um, so let's, let's, uh, you, what was, do you remember your point about God? We need to wrap it up after this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, in times of disaster, like, so we want that stability. We want that um, feeling of something greater than ourselves. We want that safety of somebody watching over you, of a guardian angel or a deity of some sort that is in favor of whether it be you as an individual, you as a religion, um, or you as a country, you as a world. Um, but deeper than that, it's really interesting to see how humans turn towards religion and you see it throughout history, whether it be, yes, um, we so do. in times of great success, the black it, death. Yeah. yeah. Or despair. No, exactly. Yeah. So in times of great success and in times of innovation, we really stress independence and that you don't have to, you don't have to care about religion or God, whatever. But you know, like you said, the bl black plague happens after you make a three pointer. Where are you pointing? Yeah. <laughs> Nine eleven. I mean, yeah, people really all of a sudden, oh here's here's god and then it's yeah everybody becomes reborn reborn yeah they, they find that's a, a good point passion. so god is accessed in greater quantities in times of despair exactly yeah your your so, your, your dad comes down with cancer and god, then you yeah. access god mm -hmm. absolutely yeah your dad just can't die and become nothing what he's his, yeah, yeah. his spirit's just going to go into the energy like no like he's going to go into heaven he's going to live a good life you're going to see him again someday that's better, isn't it's, it? Yeah, it's better. We tell ourselves that and that's what makes us feel happier. Yeah. My number one thing with it, those were all fantastic points about it. My number one thing about it is just to stay open-minded. Always. Just be in the middle somewhere about this. There's there's not going to be an empirical answer about it. You're never going to lay a scientific subjective objective truth on whether or not God exists 
and has created everything we see, or if God is the rules of the observable universe, we will never actually know the answer. So stay open-minded to it and chat with other people about why do you believe this? Why do you believe that? Um, now we have a good comment here. If something makes you feel uncomfortable, doesn't that mean you're better at something else? Therefore, pursue what you're comfortable with or no. So that's a good comment. My thought on that is that even though it's something that you're not as good at and you should be focusing on the things that make you that are you're really good at it's still good to highlight that thing that you could do especially if it just requires a little bit of time like walking across the bar to talk to the person that you're interested in a minute less than that just go check in with them so well, the, the more and that applies to so much right walking across the bar and talking to somebody is not just applied to that one moment but it's applied to so many right. other the things more occasions in you become more comfortable with exactly you look at anything that has anybody done great like they had to try it for the first time at least once nobody is born with a knowledge of technology for example oh i don't understand technologies and I'm, it makes me uncomfortable so i can't do it if if everybody said if everybody shied away from new things we wouldn't progress we would be the same we'd still be in caves fire's too controversial Oof. we can't do that Oof. we can't live in houses Oof, those we are good have ones. Computers. Those are good like, ones. It's yeah, just, yeah. You, you, things make you uncomfortable, but we need it for progress. Medicine, yeah. Typewriters, that's the devil. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, things those are it. really great list yeah. of inventions. Yeah. Fire, medicine, houses, typewriters, printing press, smartphones, technology, rockets. Oh my gosh, don't leave Earth. You're crazy. You're going to bring back some Martian stuff. Ah. Yeah. And explore. Try things out. Do it intelligently, though course do intelligently but um let these new things come into our lives and um keep observing people right keep analyzing people get really deep into the way that you see the world really think about the way you think about the world and that's it sounds very meta but the really just observe people practice people watching when you could have your phone on the bus when you could have your phone when you're bored in line or whatever keep your phone in your pocket and just watch one person for 5 10 seconds don't stare but just kind of like keep them at the corner of your yeah, eye just don't like stare. To see what they're doing <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly and yeah keep them in the corner of your eye check out what they're doing and then switch to the next person and keep watching maybe you'll see the way that a mom interacts with their child maybe you'll see that they're a little aggressive or there maybe they're a good uh, their good way that they're interacting with their child and maybe that's something that you log in for later maybe you see somebody else that's uh, stressed out and you're like I probably look that stressed out sometimes I should calm down um, there's a lot of things that we can really get from analyzing the masses and it gives us a better understanding of the world that we live in and create create make share with other people too. share your mind with others and what the mind makes and stay open-minded. Stay open-minded. Any last thoughts, Patrick? Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking what I'm going to do right when we turn this off, and I'm probably going to check my phone. So I'm a hypocrite, <laughs> but at least I, I realize you need to keep it everything in moderation. Everything um, in moderation. We're not saying destroy your TV and leave everything behind. Correct. We're not uh, throw or anything. We're just correct. Just kind of be conscious. A step, take a step use. back. We're just like get a cup of coffee and just. I know what I like to, a lot of people complain about layovers in airports and I, it's just, it's a great opportunity to sit there with your bag, not pull out your phone because you're just going to sit there and do what? Check, re reload the same Instagram feed for the 20th yeah. time. <laughs> or or why don't you new. read? Why don't you read? Or why don't you write? Why don't you make something there? Start drafting up a poem, send it to your mom, Yeah. whatever it is. All right. So thanks for tuning in across 2030 Podcast, across Facebook Live, across Twitter Live, across YouTube. Thank you, everyone. I'm your host, Alan Sakyan. This is Patrick Brennan. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. This has it. been a lot of fun. All right. Thanks, guys.